is Joy News Prime. It's 19 hours in the UK and it's 20 hours in Nigeria. In Ghana here it's 19 hours and welcome to Joy News Prime on the Joy News channel. My name is Aisha Brian Macross. Uh, coming up shortly, 41-year-old visual arts teacher emerges overall national best teacher. Even as teacher unions ask government to prioritize provision of teaching and learning materials to improve education. New job in North MPP accuses NDC agents in that area of scheming to disenfranchise some members of New Patriotic Party. Also, former charge boss and other speakers call on political parties, groups and individuals to be present and participate every process at the polling station come December 7. And ahead in business, government targets up to $100 million in first two-year domestic dollar bond aimed partly at meeting dollar commitments, but financial experts says it will have little impact on the city's stability. Tonight we also will tell you the story of what seemed to be a breakthrough in the HIV AIDS puzzle. Don't forget Join His Prime is also available across Europe on ABN Television and DSTV and GoTV. Stay tuned. We begin with a new patriotic party that is alleging that some agents of the governing National Democratic Congress have collected voter ID cards of members of the NPP in the new Juabe North constituency under the guise of giving them soft loans in the name of a certain microfinance company. According to the NPP, the NDC agents have refused to return the ID cards and have declined in giving them the soft loans as well. Maxwell Kudeku with our sister station Adam FM filed the following report. The NPP claims the attempt is a strategy to disenfranchise members of the NPP in the new Joabe North constituency. They have, however, called on the police to intervene and retrieve the ID cards, or they will find other means to ensure that their members are not disenfranchised on December 7. They made a disclosure at a press conference held at the Fiduasi Community Center. NPP constituency secretary for New Joabe North, Edward Asanti, addressed the media. It is feared that what is going on in the new Jabi North constituency is a microcosm of a well-crafted and a diabolic agenda of what may be happening nationwide, intended to divert the popular will of the people of Ghana. The NDC hears, smells, feels, and sees defeat glaringly staring at them, and they shall do anything and everything to stop it. Regional Communications Director of the party, David Pra, indicated that the NDC parliamentary candidates for New Job in North, Haruna Apau, is mobilizing nurses from the Nursing and Midwifery Training College to transfer their vote to the constituency, though they are not residents of the area. He advised the training nurses and those who do not reside in the New Job in constituency to stay off the polling station on election day, else they will deal with them. He also responded to the Vice President Kwesi Bekwen Emi Arthur's assertion on short people in Nana Akufado during his tour of the Eastern Region. He had nothing to say. He couldn't outline anything, anything. However, he only made a statement that short people are not able to see what Muhammad's government has done. With that statement, it's insulting. It's insulting to us who are not tall. But we believe that, we believe and we trust that it is better, it is better to be short and competent than to be tall and participate. Regional Communications Director of the NPP in the Eastern Region, Mr. David Pratt, joins me 
over the telephone for more on this story. Uh, good evening to you, uh, Mr. Pra. Clarify what you meant by it is better to be tall and practice gazing. Uh, well, good evening, uh, my dear sister, and greetings to your viewers. Well, uh, if you could remember, the vice president during his tour in the Ipe region uh, decided to cut attention and insinuation on the people of Ghana and for that matter, Ipe region. We know the vice president is aware that the government has performed abysmally in the Ipe region. And in fact, the president, John Dramani Mahama, is so unpopular in the Eastern region because he has done nothing in the region. And so when the vice president came to the region, he couldn't even pinpoint a single project that they have uh, really completed. And as such, he decided to uh, sway and cast a question uh, that we in the Eastern region are shocked people, and that, that therefore we could not unless we are put on uh, the shoulders before we could see what is happening. We believe that that statement is very insulting. It is not good. That is why we are saying that it, it is better. We like it. When you are short and you are competent and you can save the nation from corruption, and incompetence, nepotism, and inflation of government projects, and past rebounding, disaster, a widely and unnecessary uh, corrupt uh, uh, activities. It is better for you to be shot and you, you, you eschew those things rather than doing tall and uh, practice gayism or homosexuality. And so, so it's, 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 a, it's an advisory statement we are making. By this assertion, you're saying President Mahama is a gay? That is not what we are saying. We are advising Ghanaians. And we are telling the vice president that it would have been appropriate that he had even preached against gayism, homosexuality, and other social vices that is affecting the nation, corruption, uh, and among others. Rather than uh, going to cut attention and insult uh, the people of Eastern region, that because we are shot, that statement. It's uncultural, it is uh, unnecessary, and it's shameful. And that's why we are saying that the vice president should come again. But we believe that it is better for an individual to be short and competent rather than to be tall and gay or whatever it is. That's the statement we have made. But we don't mean whether he or president, that's not what we are saying. But you made some allegations about some agents uh, being NDC members. Do you have evidence? And what grounds are you making this allegation? Uh, we, 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 we made a statement that, for example, when you go to Suhum and uh, New Jordan North constituency, let me come to New Jordan North constituency specifically, uh, the NDC parliamentary candidate over there is a uh, transferring uh, students from the nursing training college in the New Jordan South constituency, it's transferring people from Zongos in the New Jordan South constituency to New Jordan North constituency. And we are saying that the law does not, the law of transfer does not allow, the law says that if you can transfer to the, your private constituency, if you have stayed there for not less than 24 months, the, the students and then the various people that he's transferring are not residents of the new garden, so they are not from there. They are just uh, cut pieces of papers and uh, gives uh, house numbers to them. But when they come, then they mention those house numbers. And that's why we are saying that these things are illegal, and from today up to the time uh, the closure of the transfer, we will physically prevent people who are not from the constituency to go to, to, to do that. Because we believe that those who are supposed to follow the law are not doing that. And so if we should step there and say, oh, the police or the EC will do that, then we, 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 we will be mistaken. That is why we are saying that that activity is, is an illegal activity and it must stop immediately. And again, we also stated that the police must arrest the hooligans, the NDC hooligans who beat uh, uh, the EC officials, otherwise 
it will serve as a motivation for other party people to also misbehave as such. And so police must immediately arrest these hooligans and then bring them to justice. Because if we allow them, then uh, uh, they, they and the thing of God, they are NDC before their government is in power and therefore they are empowered to misbehave. And I don't think we can stay in a country uh, with uh, lawlessness and uh, hooliganism. I don't think that is what uh, Ghana uh, was meant for. That is why we are saying that our flag there is peaceful. The Lord Bank of Kufado in all his rounds has, has been espousing whatever he, he thinks is the solution to this nation. He has talked about one district, one factory. He has talked about uh, allocating one million to each constituency. He says that he's going to restore teacher training allowances, nurses. I hope he's going to restore, he's going to uh, bring the CSHS and then uh, create a lot of employment for the youth. Well, now, many thanks to David Pra, Eastern Regional Communications Director of the NPP. We're grateful for your time on joining us, Prime. Now, Communications Director of the Zongo Caucus of the National Democratic Congress has defected from the party to join the new patriotic party. Addressing a news conference at the NPP Kokomlimle office in Accra, Awal Mohammed announced that his decision to join the NPP stems from the failure of the NDC government to design policies and programs that will address the peculiar challenges of the Zongo community in Ghana. He lauded Nane Kufuado's promise to establish a Zongo Development Fund should he win the 2016 elections. I have defected to the NPP and My decision to join the MPP is wholly based on principles and conviction. On the 30th of January this year, Nana Adudanko Akufuado addressed a Nasara conference in the Asawasi constituency where I live. After the lunch, it emerged that he promised the people of Zongo that there will be a Zongo Development Fund to help the Zongos. And Zongo Kokos afterwards, in a press conference addressed by myself, rubbished the claim and tried to bastardize the policy. And we further told the people of Zongo and the people of this country in that press conference that DNDC have better policies geared towards the development of Zongos than the MPP. So they should disregard that statement from Nana Adudanko Akufuado. Unfortunately, DNDC launched its manifesto some two weeks ago or three weeks ago, some weeks ago. I read through all the 88 page document and to my uttermost dismay and disappointment, there is no single policy that is geared towards the Zongo communities. That is uh, to the development of Zongo communities. And it is an open secret in this country that we have over 50% of the votes the NDC gets in when any elections is from Zongo. Former Commissioner of the Commission of Human Rights and Administrative Justice, Justice Emil Schott, says uh, political parties, groups and individuals must be present and participate in the whole process at the polling stations on uh, Election Day, December 7, expressing his views on what role citizens should play during the polls at a forum organized by the Let My Vote Count Alliance, Mr. Short says there's nothing wrong with filming or taking photographs of anything irregular on that day. In this regard, a well-informed electorate is critical to a credible election. The Electoral Commission and the MCC have a responsibility to educate us on governance, on the elections, and so on. But I think that individuals must take it upon themselves to learn more about the process. 
so that they would be able to make that contribution to the success of the electoral process. So you must be well informed of the electoral process. And being informed means that a citizen is armed with knowledge to participate in the electoral process before, during, and after he or she casts the vote. If you are armed with this knowledge, then it means that you will know when to register to vote, when to check the voters register, to ensure that your name is on the register. And that, in that way, you contribute to ensuring a credible register. You also contribute by reporting the death of people whose names are still on the register. And you should also contribute by reporting to the electoral commission if you know that there are names of minors on the register or there are foreigners on the register. Don't sit and say it's none of your business. It is. You must make it your business to ensure that we have a credible register. If we don't have a credible register, it is a fertile ground for dissatisfaction after the election is all that now. So a credible register is essential, and each and every one of us must do what we can to make sure that we have a credible register and to put pressure on the electoral commission to do whatever it is to ensure that we have a credible register. Meanwhile, a social activist Kathleen Adi is admonishing the participants at the forum not to be unconcerned and indifferent towards politics. She stressed that responsible citizens do not have a choice but to love politics because society must first exist for all other hopes and aspirations of citizens to be realized. She bemoaned apathy of civil society organizations and professional bodies towards violence visited on protesters during a recent Let My Vote Count Alliance demonstration. First of all, a citizen must not sit on the wall. Don't be out of consent. Don't sit back and say, as for me, I don't like politics. I think it's the worst thing anybody can say at any point in time. You don't have a choice but to like politics. Decisions are being made in your name. Money is being collected and used in your name. How can you say you don't like politics? You don't have a choice. You don't have a choice. And the area we adopt the attitude that this is a responsibility, not a favor we are doing to any political party, the better for all of us. A responsible citizen who loves the society and wants to live in peace and prosperity is one who wakes up on election day, gets the polling station, and casts the ballot. In undertaking this exercise, the citizen must examine all the options and vote for the option that is likely to deliver their hopes and aspirations. And long before the day of elections, a good citizen, a responsible citizen, an aware citizen, the one who gets involved in the process to ensure that elections ultimately are free and fair and credible. We must not take the view that an authority somewhere we ensure that all goes well. I think that's a typical dynamic. This is Joy News Prime. We'll bring you more after this break. This is Joy News Prime. Remember, it's 62 days to elections and trust your election headquarters. We'll bring you all the updates of election 2016 on TV, radio, online and mobile. We begin with President John Mahama, who has marked World Teachers Day, congratulating the Education Ministry for its aggressive efforts to stamp out teacher absenteeism in public schools. The theme for this year's celebration 
Valuing teachers, improving their status is meant to highlight the decline in teacher status and conditions of service over the last few years. Applauding the Ghana Education Service and the Education Ministry, President Mahama said unannounced visits to public schools by Resource Inspectorate Board has worked in reducing the practice. The person also reported that more teachers are demonstrating their professionalism by teaching with well-prepared lesson notes in accordance with the syllabus. According to him, by 2013-2014, uh, the proportion of teachers who possess and use well-prepared lessons notes vetted by school heads stood at 55.3%. It has come down to 7%. <laughs> Teacher presence and adequate time spent on the task are critical to quality education. I therefore wish to thank all the stakeholders, the Ministry, the Ghana Education Service, the teacher unions, and everybody for your cooperation in achieving this low level of teacher absenteeism. Mr. Chairman, Your Excellency, along with the decrease in teacher absenteeism, teacher preparedness as measured by vetted lesson notes has also improved. In 2013-2014 academic year, the proportion of teachers who possess and use well-prepared lesson notes vetted by school heads stood at 55.3%. In 2015-2016 academic year, I'm happy to note that this figure increased to 69%. But I believe that this percentage must still rise. And so I wish to urge all of you stakeholders to continue to ensure that teachers possess and use their vetted teaching notes. Lesson notes, as all of us in education know, are crucial guides and prerequisites to logical development for tracking teacher adherence to the prescribed syllabus and evidence of teacher professionalism and class progress. I wish to commend stakeholders, especially the teachers' unions, for your support to the ministry and the Ghana Education Service in their above achievements that I just enumerated. Let us not play the blame game. It has not proved to be very useful. Let us intensify the use of dialogue and well-conceived suggestions based on serious research that improve the value of the teaching profession and raise the quality of the learning experience. The Ministry will continue to work with you to improve the professionalism of teachers and your status in society. It is said that it does not take one swallow to make a summer. The success of education in Ghana is the responsibility of all of us, the stakeholders. And we must continue to work as partners in achieving a good educational system. No, a 41-year-old pre-vocational school visual arts teacher of the Soadin Memory 2 JHS at Adenta here in Accra has been crowned the 2016 overall best teacher. Rita Pong gets to choose a location for government to build a three-bedroom house for her as her reward. She spoke to Joy News after the ceremony. So always be dedicated to their work, be punctual, regular, and then take the children they teach as their own works. And then they should always use the activity-based method in their le lesson delivery. Also, teacher unions in the central region are calling on the Ghana Education Service to prioritize teaching and learning materials in schools across the country to improve academic work. According to the teachers union, GES and government pay lip service to the general public about non-existent interventions in schools. Speaking at the celebration of World Teachers Day in Cape Coast, uh, NAT chairman uh, John Kofi Sam called on GES and government to do more to help the education sector. The unions in education find it difficult to understand why the Ghana Education Service does not prioritize the provision of teaching and learning materials for teachers to do their work. 
we as professionals know that the, the honor, the non or inadequate provision of TLMs inhibits the work of teachers. It is common knowledge, however, that teachers must be well resourced to be able to perform their professional duties as required of them. It is heartwarming to note that the final draft of the Code of Conduct for GES staff has been completed. The unions in education therefore expect the GES management to sign this document together with the union representatives without delay to make it operational. We'll take a break. We'll be back with business. Time for business and government has started the sale of its first domestic dollar bond and Emmanuel Abuajiria face here hey, to Aisha. tell us more on yes, that. Yes, definitely. So take it away. Thank you very much, Aisha, and thanks for joining me on business. Government has started the sale of its first domestic dollar bond, specifically targeted at local investors and to meet some of its dollar commitments. The auction, which began on October 3, is expected to close on October 13. Sources say government is looking at raising up to $100 million, but could settle for $50 million with interest rates between 3 and 6% on this two-year dollar bond. I don't think it's going to have a significant impact looking at the quantum of funds that the government is seeking to raise. $100 million uh, is not significant enough to cause any form of volatility um, in the currency. So um, I don't think it's going to have a significant impact. Um, it's not flawed. I think that um, the, 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 what it indicates is that government going to find funds to offset these um, dollar liability for due shortly. And if um, government has to resort to uh, local investors to raise that kind of funds, then um, it's, kind of, it's kind of a leading indicator that um, government is struggling to meet the funds, in my opinion. Welcome to Join News Prime. Now to the rest of our stories. And it has proven to be one of science's biggest hurdles with researchers working around the clock to find an antidote. But could there be light at the end of the tunnel with a Ghanaian claiming to have a cure for HIV AIDS? Well, Dr. Ato Duncan, founder of the Center of Awareness Medical Center, started his journey of what could possibly be a medical breakthrough in 2006 and believes the efficacy of the trial drug is not in doubt as it has cured South, some South Africans he tried it on. However, the drug, COAT-72, will have to go through several other stages before its approval by the World Health Organization and the Food and Drugs Authority of Ghana. According to the UN AIDS, about 36.7 million people were infected with HIV AIDS by the end of 2015. Now, out of that figure, 2.1 million people became newly infected with the dreaded disease. With the stigmatization being real and the suffering and the psychological trauma that a lot of these people have to go through, Dr. Ato Duncan says he has what he believes is the cure for HIV AIDS. With two successful trials in South Africa, Dr. Tudankan believes that he has what could possibly save the world from the fearful disease. Yeah, the Qua 72 is an injectable um, herbal medicinal product uh, developed by the Center of Awareness, tried in Ghana and um, in South Africa. That has the, the potency to smoke viruses from uh, latent, latent infected source, the human beings, into the bloodstream. And uh, we have the Qua 72 intramuscular and we have the Qua 72 intravenous. The intramuscular smoke them from the hideout into the bloodstream, and the Qua 72 intravenous clears them from the bloodstream. 
why don't you have this drug in the open market or oh, you're waiting for approval from the World Health Organization? Has it been approved by the FDA? Or? No, this is purely a research finding. You cannot bring any drug on the market whilst it has gone through uh, the steps that it needs to go through. This is an in vivo pilot uh, report, study report. Then you're going to controlled clinical trials using the standard, uh, international standard protocol by the World Health Organization. Bandile Mdlasos is a South African. She says she came into contact with Dr. Atu Duncan in South Africa. She tested HIV positive some years ago. But now, she's negative. I tested when, uh, uh, years back when I discovered that I've got HIV and I've been on treatment for a couple of years now. Uh, it's more than five years I've been on treatment with my defaulting and uh, going back to medication. Until I met my uh, comrades, Brother Kwame, in one of the seminars that I invited them in my, uh, in my uh, work area in UKZN and introduced me to COA. And I've started taking COA in an oral form until they introduced they told me about the COA 72 that is the, the one that you need to inject and I started the injection, they were, I had no side effects and uh, while taking injection I was also monitoring my blood uh, through laboratory if it's anything, any difference. For Joy News, Maxwell, Agbagba. We're still talking health and this man, he was known as the mad doctor, a rather simplistic way of describing his tremendous work with mentally ill patients. Dr. David Husseini Abdullahi possessed a kindness that is rarely seen and hardly ever acted upon. He deliberately targeted people that are usually discarded onto the streets of Tamale, giving them food, shelter, medicine, and perhaps most important of all, acceptance. The late doctor died on Sunday after being diagnosed with stage four thyroid cancer at the Tamale Teaching Hospital. He was interviewed in January this year by Joy News Matilda Wamaga when she paid a visit to his home in Tamale. This passion and this love for this yes. job yes. you're doing, yes. it cost you your first marriage? Yes, it did. I think so. People may, may give all kinds of reasons, but in fact, it was because it was difficult for her to constantly live on a day-to-day -day basis, in my opinion. That we don't know what tomorrow is bringing. But I always said, and I still say, even though we don't know what tomorrow brings, we know who brings tomorrow. And let's trust God. It's not an easy thing. You can check it in your own life. Believing in God is one thing. Trusting God is quite another. And most people do not trust God. They trust more their bank accounts. <laughs> <laughs> The poor, the destitute and the sick inspired him to touch the lives of many in Tamale. The late Dr. David Fuseni Abdullahi held firm to the belief that being a medical doctor goes far beyond caring bodies. I'm not just being here for medical reasons, I'm being here primarily for social reasons to make people feel that God loves them freely and unconditionally. Now the medical conditions we usually take care of here are mentally ill people, lepers, uh, social outcasts that nobody really wants. Some of them are beggars, not all of them are beggars, but some have been beggars. Non Ghanaians who may be passing through and just stranded and don't want to go back home for various reasons have taken care of and have supported them in state here. In this society, what we normally do are people who are sick of various kinds. We go to we, see, we have an out, out patients, we need to always see patients day in and day out. All diseases, whatever we can. I'm no specialist, but I can give them the best I can. Uh, to patients who choose to come this way. So we have seen that anybody who comes here is a poor person who cannot access to the national health insurance scheme or government health care or health care. He lived most of his life at Grugu in Tamale. He calls this place Shekina Clinic, but I prefer to call it the home of love after a three hour tour in his clinic. Dr. Abdullahi planted himself here to serve his people. He houses the homeless and the terminally ill, shielding them from the scorns of society. Shekina Clinic is in the outskirts of Tamale, the capital of the northern region, which does not have a single psychiatric hospital. 
Dr. Abdullahi looked after these forgotten patients, feeding, housing, caring for them for free. The desire to be fulfilled, the desire to find real inner peace. That is my motivation. You're not being paid for all the stuff. Why, why, why do you need a salary for? You tell me, why, why do you use a salary for? Maybe to take care of myself, my why family. Would you, why, why would you want to take care of yourself and your family? So you can be happy. Yeah. So if I can find this happiness without a salary, what is your problem, <laughs> madam? <laughs> so so the, the, the motivation for you is just seeing people happy? Yes. My motivation, let me say, is very selfish. I want to find joy. And joy can never be got anywhere outside giving another person the same thing. You just reap what you sow. If you give somebody, give somebody joy, you get back. If you give somebody misery, you get back misery. How do you keep this wrong? You're doing this by yourself. You are doing it all by yourself. How do you, how do you, how, how do you keep it going? I do not do it all by myself. I do it. I believe in divine providence. It is this belief that has kept me and I trust that God is omnipotent, God is omniscient. The late doctor also fared the mentally ill on the streets of Gugu and never disappointed with his annual Christmas parties. This year, there was a vigorous social media campaign to get financial support for the good doctor who was battling stage 4 thyroid cancer and struggling with medical expenses. On the orders of the President John Dramani Mahama on Wednesday, August 10, he was airlifted to the Kolibu Teaching Hospital in Accra. The late doctor requested to be brought home to the northern region and died on Sunday, 2nd October at the Tamale Teaching Hospital where he was receiving medical attention. Following his death, the future of this serene clinic and the fate of its inhabitants are in limbo. Dr. Abdullah undoubtedly made his mark, but will it be washed away in the sands of time? For Joy News, Matilda from Maga. Please, one more, one more, please, one more. 38 motorbikes and 11 tricycles have been arrested by the Driver and Vehicle Licensing Authority in the one municipality of the Upper West Region, contrary to a leaked directive from the top hierarchy of the Ghana Police Service. Personnel of the service were involved in the exercise to effect the arrest, but Upper West Public Relations Office of the Ghana Police Service defended the action of the police, saying they were only providing support to the DVLA not effecting arrest. Rafiq Salam has the rest of the story. The exercise which was embarked on by the Driver and Vehicle Licensing Authority DBLA only lasted for a couple of hours. 38 unlicensed motorbikes and 11 tricycles, popular known as Mama Kambu, were arrested. The motorbikes and the tricycles were taken to the Upper West Motor Traffic and Transport Unit, MTTU, of the Ghana Police Service. Upper West Regional Manager of the DBLA, Jonathan Mate, who led the team, threw more light on the exercise. So these people have been riding for long with licenses. So we have arrested this uh, 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 and, and uh, uh, it's a sensitization program. We are not taking them to court. But when they come and, and acquire the learning licenses, they are motorbikes will be released to them. Uh, so that's that the essence of, of, of this exercise. Is we are checking the, 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 whether they have the license and whether their road witness has been updated. So now that you have arrested them, what next? Yeah, now we are advising them to cut BBL to at least acquire learning licenses and then they are to be released. Yeah, yeah. The top hierarchy of the Ghana Police Service on Tuesday issued a fear to suspend the checking of documents, licenses, roadworthiness, and allied requirements on motorists. However, many people were surprised to see the police being part of the exercise. Upper West Public Relations Officer of the Ghana Police Service, Joy Kudu Afagbaji, speaking off record, said personnel were only playing a supportive role to ensure the success of the exercise. But some of the victims said now that the police were involved in the exercise, the directive from the top hierarchy of the Ghana Police Service amounts to nothing as they don't know the difference between the police and the DVLA. Reporting for Joy News, Rafik Salam. Wow. Now we invite you for a training program. 
And my name is Aisha Ibrahim here in Accra and in the studio. Now, Ghana's inflation rate has measured by the Consumer Price Index, or CPI, increased to 16.9% in August 2016 from 16 to 7 percent 0.7% in the previous month. As cost of housing, utilities, and transport rise at a fast pace, consumers seek affordable means of meeting their needs. Now, the innovative buying trend has developed to the point where consumers are compelled to shop at night to cut down costs. Join News for Stina Safo has more on this report. Ghana's average inflation is 17.17%. With the increase in cost of goods and services, consumers seek more affordable means of meeting their needs. While the solution is right here at the La Paz Night Market. Wondering why the place is packed at this time? Well, we'll get to find out together. <laughs> From personal, true to household, electrical and even consumable items, consumers flood the market which actively starts from 5 p.m. and sometimes peak at 10 p.m. Stretching from the Las Palmas Junction to La Paz and the Niboy Town Junction, vendors arrange their goods on both sides of the pedestrian walkway in a desperate bid to catch customers' attention. The marketing strategy can get quite innovative with traders sometimes chanting catchy phrase. Some traders share why they choose to trade at night. Sometimes in the afternoon, the AM people do worry us. So let's usually in the evening before we can get a chance and then sell our market. And then you see, the problem here is we don't have an actually play that we can place our market and sell them. So that is why sometimes we're in the traffic. Oh, we like here. Because we don't have money to go and rent stores. You understand? So we do this one, if got permits, then small time we get, we get our store. As for here, the, the, market, the market at night, it used to go on. But sometimes when the car is coming, you know, like we used to push our things back. Some consumers cited convenience of location as a reason they shop at night, while others believe price of goods are much more affordable at night as compared to daytime. At this night, I just park, just close for work. Where I just see the phone. I uh, just look inside. If I see the better one, I can buy. I can use my choice to buy it. I think say La Paz one is better to me because it's very low price for me. Anyone where I touch inside, I know say it's very low for me. Buying at La Paz is. To me, it's more better than big stands like going to Seco and a lot of places. I live around and I choose to buy around. This seemingly convenient trader consumer partnership has, however, raised some security concerns. When coming around, you have to be careful, and it's a normal thing like people do pickpockets. It's something about you being careful and knowing what you're doing. Postina Safo, Photo News. The time you've been waiting for, Ms. G is here with the latest from the entertainment world. All right, um, Aisha, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Good to see you. Good to see you on a Wednesday night. Okay, we start off with a rumor that it's coming in. You know that Ejako now belongs to the MPP. Now, he actually went campaigning for Nanado and has promised that Nanado will win by 57%. Yes, promised. Yes, he's really? declared that Nanado will win <laughs> by 57%. He's actually playing his role mm. to see that happen. But, you know, some tape has been released. Now, in this tape, Ejako is speaking to purportedly a colleague from Kumahood. Now he's telling that colleague reasons why the he's decided to join, join the, the MPP. This voice is in true. After listening to it, I'll try wrap it up for you. President, didn't <laughs> More no access and an access is in the crew, need directors and the producers and more no one who come as it. And many access access in the access is built. Then the entire 